after the election. It's very nice to be here with all of you. And thank you for joining us um, on this Saturday afternoon. Yesterday, we concluded discussions on the final text of a cooperation agreement between the incoming Labour government and the Green Party. Green Party members are currently discussing the agreement and the text of the agreement. In the interest of transparency, we are releasing it publicly in tandem with their deliberations. On election night, I said I wanted to govern for all New Zealanders and to reach as wide a consensus on key issues as possible. This agreement does that, while honouring the mandate provided to Labour to form a majority government in our own right. The cooperation agreement balances these two objectives, whilst not committing to a more formal coalition or confidence and supply arrangement. Firstly, the agreement commits the Greens to not opposing confidence and supply votes and supporting the government on procedural motions. This has the effect of strengthening the government's stability and will ensure there is always a strong majority in Parliament on the most important votes. As we accelerate our recovery from COVID, strong, stable government is essential to New Zealand. Between this agreement and our existing parliamentary majority, we won't be held back from getting on with the work needed to rebuild our economy and continue to keep New Zealand safe from COVID-19. Secondly, the agreement identifies policy areas where Labour and the Greens will work together. This is specifically around climate change, the environment and biodiversity, as well as child wellbeing, and relates to work started last term where there is a desire to see that work continue. These are areas where the policy and experience of the Greens will provide a positive contribution to the Labour government, but without any requirement for either party to have to reach consensus. Finally, James Shaw and Marama Davidson have been offered ministerial positions outside of the Cabinet in the policy areas we've agreed to work with the Greens on. James Shaw would continue as Climate Change Minister and would also pick up an Associate Environment delegation focused on biodiversity. James knows climate change inside out. His expertise in this complex and detailed policy area is an important skill set to tap into, and he has a range of domestic and international stakeholder relationships that are important to maintain. Stability and predictability in climate change policy I see as key, and that is also being feedback that I've picked up from stakeholders ranging from environmental NGOs to the business community. Marama Davidson would pick up the new position of Minister for the Prevention of Family and Sexual Violence and Associate Minister of Housing with a specific focus on homelessness. Last term, Green MP Jan Logie led the work on family and sexual violence as an undersecretary, and it is at an important phase of implementation. Again, continuity on addressing this issue of national shame is in the front of my mind. It's also my strong belief that this is an area that should be a ministerial portfolio in its own right. And so that is what we are doing. Ultimately, the proposed cooperation agreement reflects yet another evolution in our system of MMP. Never before has one party won a majority under MMP, but that is not to say the principles of MMP should be ignored. Furthermore, it is also simply not how I do politics. I think this agreement strikes the right balance of the parties working on issues where there is agreement, allowing space for disagreement and independence, delivering business continuity and predictability in key policy areas, especially climate policy, and guaranteeing that Labour's majority is bolstered on key votes to ensure the ongoing stability of the majority government. It is now, of course, in the hands of Green members as to whether or not the cooperation agreement is supported by all parties, and we will confirm the outcome of their decision once it is made later today. I want to make one final note on the agreement and also signal some key milestones in the week ahead. There is reference uh, in 
the Labour's uh, in the agreement around Labour government's intention to work with political parties from across Parliament on issues affecting our democracy. Now, that will not be specific solely to the Labour Party and the Greens. We intend to work with opposition parties on that area also. Specifically, that is likely to include the Electoral Commission's 2012 recommended changes to MMP, changes to electoral finance law, and the length of the parliamentary term. These are issues that came up in the lead up to and during the election, and I intend to follow through on that. I believe the current parliament is uniquely positioned to address these long-term issues and find consensus on them. And judging from re recent public comment, there appears to be an appetite across parliament to take action on at least some of these issues. Finally, the week ahead. On Monday, I will name the new cabinet. I will do that regardless of the decision by Green members on the cooperation agreement outlined today. Ministers will be formally sworn in next Friday at Government House, and the first Cabinet meeting will occur that afternoon. I'll also give a speech later next week setting out the new government's priorities through to the end of this year. In particular, actions we will take to accelerate the economic recovery and continue keeping New Zealand and New Zealanders safe from COVID-19. But for now, I'm more than happy to take your questions. Why did you not New Zealand first? Oh. Will this government be more uh, productive and transformational? Oh, I, I've certainly, and you will have heard me say throughout the course of the election, uh, that a strong mandate for Labour will enable us um, to, of course, accelerate our response, continue on with the programme that we both started in our first term of office, but that we were also campaigning on during the course of the election. There is no doubt uh, that MMP arrangements can cause complications. It can cause policy to be slowed. Um, this arrangement uh, in particular allows us to have both the benefit of continuing with a strong mandate and delivering on those things that we campaigned on whilst using the skills and expertise that exist in the Green Party as well. Given that mandate, how can you for the steel to progress or not to bust? Sorry, what was that? Given, given that you do have that strong mandate, how keen are you for the steel to progress or are you not too fast? Oh, look, I would not have invested time and energy in this agreement unless I thought it was in the best interests um, of, the, of the government and also for New Zealand. Now, my view is that there are skills and talents that exist, of course, in other parties in Parliament. I want to make use uh, of those from the Green Party and work on policy areas in which there are skills and expertise as well. It makes sense for New Zealand to do that. At the same time, though, I will man use the mandate we've been given. Consider a coalition deal? No, no, that was not in my mind um, at all. Uh, equally, you know, all the way through uh, MMP, you've seen an evolution of agreements. Uh, this represents another one. It is unlike uh, any other agreement in that it doesn't require those confidence and supply votes. Uh, that means, uh, but it does mean that we'll have uh, no less than an abstention. That means we have the security of numbers in the House. We have certainty and stability, um, but at the same time, we won't uh, therefore be obliged in budget processes or in other areas that can really slow progress to form absolute consensus. How did you land on the uh, James Shaw and Madame Davison as the two ministers? Well, two, two reasons. Firstly, it does make good sense to use uh, utilise the skills of their most senior members in that they are the co-leaders of the Green Party. Secondly, both bring strong skills to the table in the specific areas we've agreed to work on. You know, I've obviously already had experience uh, with James Shaw in the role of Climate Minister. We worked closely together on the Zero Carbon Act, as he did with a range of people across uh, New Zealand sectors that were affected by it. His relationships are good. His expertise is strong. We should make use of that. Likewise, Madam Davidson has built relationships with some of our ministers already in these areas. It is where some of her background and passion sits, it makes sense that we use that too. 
Given the um, expertise that you want to lean on, though, why not also bring in Julia Dinte, Eugenie Sage, the people who are also ministers in your last year? Look, what we also have to balance is that whilst there are those skill sets there, I also have to acknowledge, of course, the mandate that Labor has been given. Uh, so, yes, while there will be areas that we will uh, work together and cooperate, I also will be making sure that we use the skills in our own caucus and that we pursue them with vigour. Ms. Wild, electoral, uh, MMP, uh, mm. report, are you personally in favour of abolishing the coattailing rule and lowering the threshold to four? That always has been Labour policy. Uh, of course, we've set out here an intention to work across Parliament. So those will not be conversations just being had by the Labour Party and the Green Party. But there were already a list of areas where there is a strong view, obviously, in Parliament that we need to address them. Electoral finance, uh, term limits are an area of interest for all parties. It makes sense that in those conversations, we also raise those uh, recommendations that have not been addressed. I'd like to see more state funding of the political, you know, the, the campaign finance centres, the state funding. It campaign. will naturally, I think, lend itself to a wider conversation. If we want to build uh, more uh, confidence in our system. We have to address some of the electoral finance concerns that have been raised in the last term of Parliament. I'm not going to predetermine what the outcome of that will be, but I have a very strong view that we can do better. Do you think term limits have always been an issue for a yeah. referendum? Do you agree yes. with that? Oh, look, and, and I think it is a significant issue where politicians haven't been wanting to be, wanted to be seen to be feathering their own nest in that regard. Um, it has obviously, prior to MMA, P being tested twice, uh, uh, to the best of my recollection, and failed. Um, that's something that I would want to discuss with wider parties around how they want to test the public appetite, but I think that has made sense in the past. Minister, so why did you vote yes to legalise recruitment? I'll just come here and then I'll come back to you, Toba. What consideration are you giving Māori representation when selecting this uh, next cabinet? Oh, well... That is one of my key considerations alongside utilising the skills in the team, making sure we're using experience but also bringing through new talent and making sure the diversity that was elected into this parliament is reflected uh, in the cabinet table and beyond. So it is a key factor for me. Also, the fact that we have been given a, a strong message of support from uh, the Māori community, not least in our party vote, and I want to see that reflected in the makeup of our team. We can see more than two, more than a nine in Calvin and Cabinet. I don't want to uh, give away too much before the Monday announcement, but as I say, I do want to make use of the, the skills that we have in our team. Why do do you I'll, I'll circle back to you, Toby. Do, do you imagine there are some Labour um, grassroots members or MPs that are annoyed that you have chosen to bring the Greens into government? No, no, I don't believe so. You know, certainly that's not what's being reflected um, to me. I think that there is an acknowledgement that we work in an MMP environment. We have been given a strong mandate here, which we have every uh, expectation that we will be using. And you can see that in the nature of this agreement. This agreement is striking a balance between utilising the skills that we have in the parliament, but also making sure that we, that we aren't held back in utilising the mandate that New Zealanders have given us. We haven't compromised that mandate at all. Why did you vote yes to legalise recreational cannabis? Um, look, as I've said, you know, since I became an MP, two issues that I've always wanted to weigh up. One is not wanting to see people uh, imprisoned for personal possession, but at the same time I've always had concerns about young people's access. I weighed those issues up and I voted in favour. However, I wanted every New Zealander to weigh those issues up independently of my view. That was something I set out, I think, as early as the beginning of the year, and I stuck to it. Do you believe that cannabis should have been legalised? Why not have the courage of your convictions and say so? Well, firstly, I reject that me allowing New Zealanders to make up their own mind uh, is anything other than allowing people the old freedom of their view. Um, and I have taken that position right at the beginning of the year, that that's what I would do on the referendum. It's also important to note that the Labour Party doesn't have a position on this issue. I'm the Labour leader. I took my vote as a personal vote in the way that many others New Zealanders did.
help the Yes campaign? No, I don't. I don't actually. I think ultimately New Zealanders made up their own mind. Um, I do. I, there have been issues where I have taken very strong positions on things that are quite personal. Euthanasia, I've always been consistent on. Abortion law, not only did I take a position, I pursued it and changed the law in Parliament. On this occasion, I wanted New Zealanders to decide. Well, yeah, on the responsibility, but basically the Greens would be able to criticise the government's moves in the environment and climate change and housing. Sorry, um, basically on they would On collective responsibility, they wouldn't obviously be able to criticise the government within those portfolios, right? So that would mean that Marla Davidson could, could have criticised the government across all of housing. Um, and no, so that, climate change or all of environment, or, or is it a bit... No, it's a, so of course the, the areas of their uh, cabinet responsibility are very, are very specific. So obviously climate change, family and sexual violence, biodiversity within the environment portfolio, and, and homelessness as it relates to the rollout of the homelessness strategy. So look, they are quite clearly defined areas uh, that they will be working across. But you'll notice there's another innovation in this agreement. In paragraph 30, it notes that ministers from the Green Party will be not be restricted from noting where a policy may deviate from the Green Party policy on an issue if that is required, and it may be noted in the Cabinet Minute on a key issue. So it's almost a, an iterative of an agree to disagree provision that allows them to be a party to those cabinet decisions. Um, but if there's an area where they would have liked to have done something further or different, they can note that at the same time. So they have fairly free reign to criticise the government. Well, on obviously, issues. there is still the expectation of cabinet collective responsibility, and there is a process attached here. But actually, the areas where they have that responsibility are quite neatly defined as well. Were you given the impression that the Green Party walked away from the talks happy? Yeah, yeah, I was. You know, this is something we actually worked through. You know, it was a it was a very good process. We met a number of times. There were a number of conversations between us and our teams in between. Um, it was incredibly collegial. We know each other well. We've had three years of working together. Um, so I found it a very efficient and constructive process. So yes, I think both parties see that it brings benefit to each of us, and we both have a win win from this arrangement. Do you have any sticking points? Like sorry, was any that? specific points that um, you came unstuck on? No, no, not at all. I mean, ultimately, you'll see here, though, that we have been quite clear in the areas where we believe we've already got a good starting point for consensus. So, you know, we have particularly named those areas because those are the ones that we will spend a bit of time on together, and we wanted to make sure the foundation for those talks were good. The public can expect quite a big change in those areas, then. Sorry? So the public can expect quite big change in those areas? Well, you're, no, you're actually what you'll notice is the areas we've listed are already areas in which we have good common understanding. You know, of course we've already got plans that we formed as a government on Kauri dieback. Each of us wanted to take it a step further during the election campaign, so let's do that. Um, the uptake of low emission vehicles, uh, the Zero Carbon Act, these are all areas where there's good consensus, but we might have different policy ideas we want to work on together. Why did it I, I, again, I think I uh, set out an estimate that we would have government formation um, uh, before or at the same time as the specials, and I think I indicated two to three weeks, and that's what we've stuck with. Talks were longer than you'd first planned for, though. Oh, I, I remember in my own mind setting out conclusion on a Friday, and essentially they concluded on a Friday. Obviously, we've now got the Greens undertaking their own consultation, though. Why, why are you doing this now rather than waiting until their deliberations are over? Well, ultimately, the presentation of this agreement, this is the, this is the offer. And so either this will be accepted or it won't. My expectation would have been that we would be sharing that regardless of whether it was accepted or not. We did let the meeting start. We didn't want this to, to preempt the ability of the Green Party to present it to their team. And they've obviously done that. But at the same time, an acknowledgement that we did need to be transparent around what it was we agreed, regardless of whether or not it finds favour with the Green Party or not. discussion about giving the Greens an associate finance um, portfolio? Oh, uh, look, we, we discussed a range of options. There was nothing that, it, that we dwelt on particularly. We, dis, we did discuss a, a range particularly, obviously, where there had been portfolios before. Um, but it's fair to say, I think, that there was a natural home here for these portfolios that there seemed to be good consensus on. Uh, yes. A good 2017 agreement with the Green Party had numerous policies, specific policies. This one has three years of cooperation. Yes. Who made that decision to go to a more 
broad approach. Yeah, I think actually what certainly um, I believe both parties did before going into these talks was reflect on the range of agreements across the course of MMP governments. That's actually something I did last time we started our talks. Each reflect often different makeups, um, different majorities. 2017 is not a fair reflection of the reality of what the election outcome has delivered in 2020. 2005 and beyond, those other arrangements that were more like cooperation agreements were a better reflection of the way that we would likely work. But we again wanted to evolve them one step further. Uh, so we've done that with the addition of ministerial roles. That brings extra cooperation on those key areas. And then we've allowed ourselves the space to work in these additional listed areas. There's a specific mention of taking action on plastic and waste is that are we going to see uh, a, what are we going to see for this term is it going to be transformational in our oh, look enough? you know one of the things that I think we were all clear on in the last government is that and particularly you know the reason we tasked our chief my chief science advisor with doing work in this space is that we do have a lack of coherence ac across issues like curbside recycling, the products that are able to be recycled in New Zealand, the incentives that exist. We started under Eugenie Sage a good piece of work, but we really want uh, to speed up that particular area, and both parties feel very strongly about that. There's still there some, um, there some alignment around uh, directional travel in terms of electric vehicle uptake, uh, uptake. Would you potentially see a compromise there in terms of adopting um, the Greens fee base? It hasn't been listed here, but you do see that we have talked about the clean car standard and generally about the uptake of low emission vehicles. And there, of course, are a range of ways that we can support that happening. What happens to the, just what happens to the Ihu Makau yeah. detail, deal now? Oh, look, alongside a range of other issues that we know that we need to resolve, that will be amongst one of them. Can I go back to your yeah. referendum for a moment? Because it's going to fail very marginally. Like, it was very close. Like, 1.4 million Kiwis will express an opinion to change the law. Mm -hmm. Yet yesterday, um, Justice Minister Andrew Little seemed to rule out a decriminalisation approach. You might even have the numbers on the House to do that. Why won't you look at sort of a halfway house? Actually, between? I think what you'll find is he did refer to the changes that were made in the last parliament under the Misuse of Drugs Act, which does stipulate, and this is something that wasn't often talked about over the course of the debate on cannabis, that change in the Misuse of Drugs Act does place uh, an expectation on the police, uh, who of course are at the front line of addressing possession, um, does stipulate that they are to take a health approach unless it's in the public interest not to do so. I think where the um, uh, Minister of Justice has been very clear is that is a very recent change, and what we need to ensure is that it's meeting the expectations of the parliament. Uh, I do think that there's work to be done there in ensuring that has been the case, that change is already being made. Is it bedding in as we expect? We've had 500 health referrals since it came in, but let's do a little bit of a breakdown into those situations where that has not been used, and is that what we would expect? Well, Mark, the same question that we asked you the day before the election, like do you think, do you concede that this, considering that the margin of the vote was so close, even though you suggest that you wouldn't persuade things, plainly you would have, do you concede that it does hit your progressive Well, I asked every single New Zealander to vote for Labour and they didn't. I, I don't expect that my opinion necessarily would change people's personal opinion on it. But most importantly for me, I wanted them to have their own opinion. Um, look, there are a multitude of areas, there's a multitude of areas um, where, of course, I will take strong positions every single day. But on this, I genuinely wanted people to consider their own personal view in the same way that every Labour member did because we do not have a party position on it. Why are three yeah. times more likely to be arrested for cannabis-related charges? The people have voted no now, so what are you going to do to fix that part of it? Yeah, and as I just mentioned to Ben, I think one of the areas that we need to look at is given that we have already now set out in our law the expectation of a health-based approach, let's drill into what the, the numbers are telling us there. Of those 500 referrals, you know, what was some of the ethnic breakdown of that? What's the ethnic breakdown of those who have been charged and the circumstances of those who have been charged instead? We have a tool there. We've got to make sure that it's being used properly and in the way that the last parliament intended. Keeping in mind, it's only recently started. And so that is something that I do want to make sure is being done properly and as we expect.
the four year term, you, yeah, you, you, I'll you take a last couple of years. Like, you, you, you're not quite sure if you want a referendum on that or not. Judith Collins has said very clearly that the National Party position is that it would need a referendum. No, I think what I was saying was that this is a conversation that I do want to have across Parliament, and it's good that we already have a view from one party. Let's take views from all of them. You, you, you yourself, you, you're not rolling out going about a referendum. You think that's. that's oh, look, uh, no. Yeah, as I just said, you will have heard me say that actually for, you know, previous parliaments have always been careful never to be seen to feather their own nest on something like a term limit, and we do need to be careful on that. So that's why referendums obviously make good sense in an area like this, and I absolutely wouldn't rule that out. I just want to make sure we have those conversations across parliament and take a genuinely cross-party um, position on how we're going to have this discussion and debate. Could, could we move on those terms, though? Could you see it? Yes, yeah, you would have to push it out. You know, it, you know, I think that most proposals have always pushed beyond a single term because you can't be seen to be adjusting a term that you might then benefit from. If I'm going to be to that can be... That's, oh, that's look, it. again, all the things that you would discuss, but it certainly would never be immediate. Never. Yeah. Think, you know, in this, this past election, we did better than three years ago. We've got more MPs, and yet this deal will give us fewer ministerial responsibilities. And we won't have any concrete promises. There, there, there are larger areas of promise. Do you think a lot of their members will be looking at this and thinking that this is a bit of a step back? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think that they, they will be looking at the election result and saying, well, actually, Labor could govern alone. Labor could give a, govern without bringing in any other additional uh, experience into that, uh, into that ministerial team in the areas that the Greens have worked in. And so I think that they will be considering both sides. You know, all of us absolutely understand that what was delivered in this election was not 2017, but we have had past arrangements that have been somewhat closer, and those are the ones that we reflected on. But again, we actually added to them in a while, as well, and I think in a way that's really beneficial. The last point I would make of the you know, 70 odd things that we did together between the uh, Labour Party and the Greens. Um, I believe it's roughly half, were never in a stated agreement. They were things that we worked through as problems arose. And so I think the thing to remember is that even though we've got stated areas here, in some cases we'll work through those areas of cooperation over the course of a term. The committee of the Green Party looking at the chair, or is that what we discussed here? Yeah, well, look, there have been discussions around that, but we've been very mindful that those are actually decisions for the parliament. So those aren't things that really we can stipulate, but what we can do is support their nomination. Um, obviously, um, the areas where they have interest include, for instance, the Environment Select Committee. Be it will not be EPC, no, no. So it's it's in the area that you would consider most obvious. Um, but again, that is a decision for Parliament, but we'll be supporting their nomination. Okay, thank you, everyone.